Top of the morning to you. <laughs> man, I wasn't going to do that, but I had to do it, man. I feel like I've been starting these little posts um, with too serious of a of an introduction sometimes. At least that's the way it sounds when I play it back, right? Man, I hope everybody's morning is doing well so far. Um, good morning, God's people. And that's everybody. I was um, heading in, hitting these streets, man. Got my little coffee going and I had a thought and I'm like, well, you know what? I listened to something and then it sparked a thought. And I didn't, I wasn't sure if it was uh, something that God was pressing upon me to put out here in the airwaves. And I'm still not absolutely sure, but it kind of lingered. So I'm going to go ahead and stay with it. Um, you know, it's about really staying committed to your particular faith and and what i mean is now i'm you know some things might come out of my mouth that uh could sound a little harsh but they're not harsh one thing about this ministry rising ground church is again we are advocates of divine flow and life givers meaning this is what we've committed our life to living from this divine flow and you know uh, most people of faith, I think, would say the same thing, but sometimes I, I, I got to disagree because, you know, it's hard at times to live in this way, man. You know, there are, there are things around us every day, all day, that point us to how the world says that we should do it. And I'm talking about specifically the faith world. The faith world in the weeds, you know, we're in this world, but we're not of the world. And Sometimes I want to do people really realize that for me that that simply just tells me that um, it's like a classroom. You know, you're you're in the classroom, but you're not of it. You can leave the classroom when when you decide to when you when, when you're ready and go out and do the things that you that you've learned to do. You know, so we're in this world. You know, we're in this system of living, but yet we can go and go out and go beyond this system of living because that's just who we are as these uh, spiritual beings, man. So you can literally um, live life in this world like the world. But when it's time to show your cape, to show your, your S, you, you know, you can fly right out of the classroom. And I'm not talking about dying or, or leaving the planet. I'm talking about... You can leave the system and go do some supernatural stuff like you were born and you were meant to do. So uh, that's what that's what that means for me being in the world and another world. But it seems like most of us are in the world and we stand in the world because um, for a lot of different reasons. So some of us, you know, as you build your faith, as you build your life here, you know, it seems like we can experience more of defeats than we do victories in the faith, man. Um, and that's not true, but it sure feels that way at times. So that that those things make impressions in you and those impressions drive you to stay right where right where you are, you know, and that's in the world when it's time to move out of the classroom, to move out of the system and do what it is that God is calling you to do, both individually and collectively. So staying committed to your particular faith, your commission, your command. And one thing about God is most of us believe and, and think that, you know, if it's not written in the words of Scripture, then it's not from God. That's an absolute fact that, that, that we believe, but it's a false belief it's not real it's not right it's limited and it's um it's veiled i don't want to say that that's not true it's true for when it's true and what it's true for but god is bigger than the words on the pages so um did god is it written in the bible shanika james i need you to go left and pick up this trash right is that is that in the bible no it's not in the bible but it's you can believe that somebody named Shanika James, if God is guiding you to do something like that, you better do it. You, you know what I mean? So there are things that will be said to you that will be spoken to you that you will feel intuitively that God is moving you to say to do 
Um, and it's biblical. It's Bible. It's God. You, you got to do it. So specifically, I'm talking about, man, you know, we, how many of us have ever met people that we would consider radical? You know, let's, let's say radical Christians. I've, it seems to me that the people that dominate visibly, um, the, the, the spiritual realm here, they're very unconventional they're very, um, what's that word? Eccentric, I think. Or maybe I'm looking for another word, but eccentric is cool. Uh, they, they go beyond their natural worldly attitudes and characteristics. And they move in this way that um, makes them do things and say things that most regular Christian people or spiritual people would consider unconventional and crazy. But see, this is this is this is the thing, man. You have to be willing to go wherever it is. God is telling you to go. You have to be you have to go because not only your spiritual advancement depends on it, but the world's too, because somebody has to be the visible piece that lets the other person know that this is real, man. This is OK. This is needed. So whatever unconventional way to say something, how to pray, what to do. You know, remember, y'all remember hearing them stories where people would, would pray people, you know, and, and even Jesus spitting in your eyes, you know what I mean? Getting some mud and spitting on it and putting in your eyes and people. I've heard of people clotheslining people. And for those who don't know what that means, that means somebody literally running up on you and taking their arm and uh, forcefully either around your neck or in the upper part of your chest, hitting you and making you fall. They've done these things uh, because they, they felt like God was telling them to do it and they did it and the healing or the supernatural moment, it happened because they were willing to go beyond the, the comfortableness of, you know, faith. Most of us don't want to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm man, I'm not going to close now spit into somebody's eyes, you know, because I think it, what, what if it don't work? You know, you just spit in somebody. So so those what if it don't work attitudes and thoughts are not God. They're not God. Godly thoughts, godly thoughts. We just we're just here to be in divine flow in the, in the stream, in the current of whatever God God's water is is where we're, we're particularly on. And then do what it, do what we're supposed to do there. You know, that's it. That's it. But we limit ourselves to the uncomfortableness, or we limit ourselves to the what was the word? To the to the um, just going with the flow, not to not not the divine flow, but the world flow. We limit ourselves to to there because we we are afraid to be those people to be those remnants to be those things that God has called us to be because you don't want to look like a fool you don't want to sound like a fool so when we praying for people we we, we keep it you know we, we keep it all bottled in you know I don't want to say all this I don't want to say you know supernaturally you're healed I don't want to say no I'm not going to pray that you just um, settle in your death and die and, and, and everything else around you just go smooth. No, I don't, I'm not going to pray that. I'm going to pray something different. But we're afraid to pray something different or do something different because we don't want to be wrong. So how does that look to God? And I personally believe that, you know, people say, you know, God, um, God is watching you and you're not trustworthy. I don't think it's, I don't think it's that. I think more of there is a frequency of faith that if you don't tune into, then you'll never get to that point. It's not God is sitting somewhere saying you're not worthy because you're afraid and I can't trust you. No, you don't. You're not sending out the frequency or the signal that God needs you to send out to connect with God in that way that produces that experience of supernatural movement. It's because you're scared and I get it. I'm not judging you because I'm telling you, you know, I've, I've been scared a whole lot and I'm sure I'm still scared of things and I'm awaiting, awaiting, you know, for the day when I'm going, I'm going to have to move outside of that comfortable zone to say and do something for God 
So the uh, experience of whatever God is trying to get to happen happens, man. You know, I know that's I know that's going to happen, but I'm specifically coming here to here today. Like I said, I got my coffee. I had to put pull over because sometimes I do this and um, I'll hit these bumps and I can hear all the bumps in the in the recording playback. And I don't want to hear no bumps. I just want to be a smooth dialogue right now. So, people, man, I hope that is making sense. I hope it made sense. You have to go beyond what what you're standing in. The, the person of God that you think you are. You have to move beyond that thing. And another reason is this. This is scientific. It's, it's, it's when you continue to stay in the place that you've always been, then your physiology stays there with it. The frequencies that are meant to expand and go higher to bring supernatural experiences into our everyday life will not happen because you're the same person you were before you experienced God. Or when you, when, you know, when you was drinking the milk of God, you know, that baby stuff, you're that same person in, in, and in that space is not the, 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 I'm trying to use another word in supernatural, but the, the powerful, diminutive, diminutive, is that, is that a word? The all authority having this that God wants you to display, that's not there. We're always here to move higher and go higher and experience new things, God, in new ways. But you got to go beyond where you are. You have to do it. I mean, if you don't contribute, you cease to exist. That's another law that runs in the universe. And that's and that's spiritual, too. If you don't want to go where God wants you to go, and I'm not talking about physical places either, but that, that can be there, too, then you're going to cease to exist. You're not going to contribute. So then you'll fizzle out. Your spark will fade and will um, extinguish itself. Hope is making sense, man. This is real. This is real Monday talk. <laughs> real Monday talk. I think I'm a. No, I'm not. Real Monday talk, y'all. Rising Ground Church. This is Pastor Jamal. I am signing off for the moment, but you might hear something else. It all depends on what God is saying, and I have to go with the flow. So do you. Divine flow. Talk to you. <laughs>